as we sit here on uh, January the 3rd, do you, and we talked about the trade, you, you mentioned the trade deadline, which is I mean, still a ways away, six, seven weeks, but do you have any sense at all that this will be busier than normal, um, not as busy as other trade deadlines in, in your conversations that you have on an ongoing basis with other GMs? You know, I, it'll be early for me to, 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 to speculate, but it's a good question. Going back the last couple of years, the total number of transactions have been reflective of years previous. Uh, they're just grouped together tighter around the deadline and around typically around the draft. There are more longer-term deals than you've seen before. Those mm-hmm. are typically tougher to move at any time. Uh, the salary cap teams are getting closer to, to really being at the top of their budget as opposed to the top of the cap. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing moves as more long-term contracts get signed and, and uh, expect you know, a number to be signed uh, after January 1, as we are now. We're teams that are players on the last you know, one-year deals can, can sign extensions. Uh, so, but 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 that being said, I do expect there to be a, a good deal of movement, especially with teams that are, you know, the few teams that are defined sellers at that point. Do you think bubble teams will will be trading with other bubble teams? Because generally speaking, you look at the have-nots, the teams that are not going to make the playoffs. Those are the ones that are most likely to do deals. The dilemma you face is, <clears throat> excuse me, is it with this um, with parity and with this point system that exists right now and with the shootout where you know a point seems to be happening almost every night to every team you get something the dilemma is i mean right now tampa bay is the worst team in the east they're eight points out los angeles is the worst team in the west they're 13 points out i know 13 points is a lot of points but it's not it's not absurd it's not it wouldn't be ridiculous for me to suggest to you and you probably would acknowledge that either Los Angeles or Tampa Bay gets a little bit hot in the month of January and you know what all of a sudden they stop being an automatic seller and become a you know scratch your chin maybe we ought to take a run at this thing there may just not be that many teams out there selling John that's why I ask I know and I think it's a good point and I brought that up last year you know on our side uh, you'd see Washington uh, obviously, and, and uh, two or three others, primarily Philly, obviously, last year. Yeah. Um, and, and there were more defined sellers in the West, uh, L.A., Phoenix, and, and um, you, know, you, you know, possibly Edmonton after, you know, Smith didn't get done. Columbus. Clearly, you know, they won, they won two of their last 20. Uh, Columbus. Uh, and really, aside from almost Colorado trying to chase Calgary, you know, there was really six teams that were selling. And, and this year... Uh, that's the only piece. Of, as we move the deadline up, that we did uh, coming out of the uh, the lockout, uh, coming out of the work stoppage, uh, we added games to the balance of the schedule after the deadline, and mm-hmm. that also um, will uh, you know not give teams more information. It'll actually give them less to determine what they're going to do prior to uh, the twenty sixth. But I guess in theory, John, that would mean that if there are if there are fewer defined sellers, there are very few defined sellers. That if a team wanted to to do make do something bold. To, to say, you know, we're going to be realistic here. We, we, maybe we're sort of in this and maybe we're not in this, but we've got to do something big to change the course of this franchise. That would put them, it would be a seller's market then, wouldn't it? They would have the advantage because there's so few teams and so few real assets that are going to be out there. Yeah, you know, and, and what you saw last year, you didn't see many impact players getting moved for rentals. You, you saw some picks, and typically they weren't coming from teams that were were you know, low end or, or projected to have real high picks. Um, you know, so you, you really weren't seeing, you know, you can call it a seller's market, certainly, but, you know, you didn't see a lot of impact uh, players. I mean, uh, you know, depending on where Edmonton picks this year, which went to Anaheim in the Penner Group 2 offer sheet, you know, you know that, that pick, uh, you know, could very well be a, um, you know, a top pick. I, mm-hmm. I don't see that there's going to be, those teams that are going to have real, real high-end picks available, dumping them at the deadline, um, and and the buyers that are going to pay what you'd say sellers' fees are typically the ones that know they're going to make it, and and they're doing it to add, uh, you know, add some iron for the run. Uh, before I let you go, real quickly, I think you mentioned is Clemenson going to start tonight. Yes, we'll have the same lineup as we had the other night, and and. Uh, you know, we'll see Clemenson against uh, Conklin, who's, uh, you know, come in and uh, done a real good job for Pittsburgh. Yeah, 5-0, and oh, I think, isn't he? Yes, he is. And uh, Toscola, um by the weekend? 
or you don't know? Uh, I, possibly, Bob, but but more likely out west. Uh, we'll be in Anaheim okay. next Wednesday, and, and uh, that's a more likely scenario for us. Thank you for joining us, John, and uh, we'll stay in touch. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Stephen. John Ferguson, the Maple Leafs uh, general manager. Um, as usual, playing his cards fairly close to the vest, but not discounting the possibility that, um, you know, in three or four or five weeks from now, this team may indeed have to reassess where it's going long-term and short-term. The mm-hmm. dilemma they face, and probably the worst thing that can happen to them, which is what exactly what I said at this time last year, and is exactly what happened, is they were close. I think that's exactly what's going to happen again. And so be, you, you go into a state of paralysis. Well, because there, again, you have the short-term goals of ownership, and uh, which are get in the playoffs and play for a round and throw, some, throw a bone to the fans and make some money, because it's pretty darn profitable, mm-hmm. uh, versus the long-term goals of, is this, is this a championship team in the works? Is this in the making? Uh, I, they're, they're not compatible, No, I don't think. And I think the history of the team since 67 tells you they're not compatible. They're not good enough, they're not bad enough. That's right. And so... You get stuck is exactly what happens. 22 before the hour. More hockey, but this, uh, the World Juniors, as we're down, what, the final four? They're down to four now, aren't they? 